You'll have a tale or two to tell when you come back. Can you promise that I will come back? No. And if you do, you will not be the same. So we saw The Hobbit tonight, and uh, we're going to wait a few days to post this yeah. so we can, you know, give our thoughts. And you guys have hopefully seen the movie already because there's going to be a massive spoilers in this video. First of all, I want to say, please don't get mad at us. Yeah, uh, I should probably preface yeah. this. And we're going to come off as super fanboy nerds and, yeah. like, nitpicking at everything. But it's not an awful movie. It's just, it has problems and we can't help but notice them. It's got a, quite a few problems, especially yeah. half of the movie has a problem. And the whole thing has one big problem. I'm gonna start off by saying, not the hugest fan of Lord of the Rings. I like them, I understand why people like them, they're well made, but for me I was never into the whole Frodo thing. Um, <laughs> now the biggest issue, before we talk about plot points I guess and all that, is 48 frames per second. Yeah, that's uh, very distracting. Yeah. Usually movies are 24 frames, this one's 48, so it's double the speed. To me, it really took me out of the movie. We were wondering if it was going to be in 48 frames, the screening, no. and as soon as the New Line Cinema logo came on the screen, we both looked at each other and went 48 frames per second. Because yeah. it was just like, it blurred past really fast, and it was like, what and the, the... And the damn line, wow, wow, it's <laughs> yeah. like, slow it down. It did, look, it was... The, it, it, it's just it's an adjustment and I will say that after a while you got a little bit used to it at first you know Bilbo's walking through the Shire and his his you know bag end or whatever his house is called and it, he looks like he's it's like jittery and weird and he's walking around all fast and look I'm all for technological advances I'm all for let's do a new thing and see how it works but a lot of this movie to me came off as an experiment of some kind yeah. like it was they were trying to do something with this 48 frames per second and some people will probably watch it and be like, oh, this is the next big thing. Yeah. But I think the majority of people are going to find it very distracting as we did. Yeah, it's unsettling. It kind of takes out the movie magic glow that really kind of masks CGI and kind of blends it all together. Yeah, that's true. That just made everything pop out that was CGI or artificial in the movie. Yeah. Um, and another thing, I was actually, I heard a few people around us, what's wrong? What's going on? What's wrong with this movie? I heard a couple guys down from us say that. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's 48 frames per second. That's not how movies should look. And it mm -hmm. kind of looked like a universal theme park ride rather than a movie. You know, some of the action scenes looked cool in 48 frames per second. Like, I could see that being part of a ride where you go through it, it's bumpy, and then all of a sudden something jumps out of the end. But not for a movie, and especially not for a movie like this. Yeah, I gotta agree. And okay, so the 48 frames, we you know, we didn't like it. We both agreed it looked kind of like a video game graphics yeah. at times. You could just see the imperfections, like he said, of various CGI things. And it just didn't look as real. Like the first three Lord of the Rings films, they were all almost entirely shot in real locations, uh, whether it was a set or somewhere in New Zealand, and you, you even if you weren't a big fan of them, yeah. I loved them. You can appreciate it. You can appreciate it. It looked like they were shot in a real place. Like you bought that Aragorn was running up a mountain and everything. A lot of this movie really felt kind of George Lucas-y, like, like stale environment, you know? Yeah, just like, here's that, here's some slapped in CGI, we're not really gonna blend it, and we're gonna try to push technology that's not quite ready to be pushed yet. I love the, the original three films. If you guys watched my, my three reviews I did leading up to The Hobbit, I gave them all an A+, my highest grade. I love those movies. They're some of my favorite movies. I get that you aren't the biggest fan of them. To be honest though, I didn't actually have high expectations going into this movie, even though I should, because the yeah. last one won like 13 Oscars. Yeah. I knew for some reason that it wasn't gonna live up to that, and so I wasn't setting myself up for that. There are good things in this movie. There, let's talk about a few. We'll good... get to them. We'll, <laughs> we'll get to them. Okay, let's okay. get the shit right, out of the way. Let's get it out of the way. The first like hour and a half was like a snail. Yeah, it's just dragging just... along like an old woman who's decrepit, who doesn't have arms, she's in a wheelchair going uphill, and I drive by in my car, and she looks at me, but it's okay because I'm the youth and I'm the future. Very accurate. It, it didn't make <laughs> sense at all. No, the first hour and a half is, yeah, nothing really happens. And I, it's not like I need, uh, you know, explosions or this or that. Kind of way. Yeah, because to be yeah. honest, even in the two towers, you know, there's like one action scene and then Battle of Helm's Deep. The rest of the movie is a lot of planning and this and meeting characters and everything, but it's really well done. Here, there's something about the fact that I think that there are so many dwarves. There's like, what, 13 dwarves? Yeah. Plus Bilbo? It's hard to keep up. You can't really get attached to too many characters. You just, there's Thorin, the main dwarf, who is pretty cool. Gandalf, who's, I like Gandalf, he's awesome. Bilbo, yes. Bilbo was 
you know, I don't know, like a little bit unlikable at first. At first, at first, and that's just I think that's just because he was so like prissy about everything, like oh, don't touch my kitchenette and everything. Yeah, and my then, plates, my plates. Right, and then eventually he got a little bit more into it, the adventure, and he came a little bit more likable. It's just the first part of this movie was it just was too slow and stagnant. I, yeah, I like that. <laughs> One of the things that I know about this movie and that you know is that originally it was supposed to be two films. In the middle of production, decided to make it into three films. Cha-ching! Yeah. I really think like that's one of the reasons why this movie was as slow as it was in the beginning because it seemed like what might be an extended edition Blu-ray for like hardcore fans yeah. actually was the movie. And there was a lot of added scenes that should have been removed, I feel. Basically 40 minutes of deleted footage, but it really they didn't delete like it. The one weird wizard who has the bird's nest in his head with the rabbit sled. Real like, quick, insert a picture here. What was the white shit leaking off the top of his head? Probably from the birds that were in, the, in his Just head. Just shitting on his head without yes. him. He's a wizard, man. Create some shampoo and get the <laughs> shit out. Maybe your yeah. bunnies can eat it. If there's a character and he has a purpose, no matter how stupid he, stupid he is, if he moves the plot along, fine, so be it. Yeah. But this guy's 10 minute, 15 minute portion could have been chopped out and nobody would have known the difference. And yeah. that's that's the truth. Now you said before, there was kind of like a George Lucas thing going on. And I know that's sad to say when you're talking about The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson, but there's very stagnant shots. There's a term again. There's especially one where they go to Elf Village. Mm -hmm. Whatever the hell it's called. Hugo Weaving standing there. They're sitting at a table for like 10 minutes, just talking back and forth. Just here's one shot, here's the next shot. Here's one shot, here's the next shot. The whole conversation really doesn't go anywhere. It played no effect into the plot or role of the movie. No one's opinion really mattered there. It, nothing happened. But John, it was in the book. That's fine. One other thing about that scene, this movie, you know, movies have green screen effects. That's a given, fine. But there was something about that particular scene where the green screen effect really stood out because there was like bad hair lighting on Gandalf. A lot of background glow. Yeah, like a halo effect going around people. It just really stood out. And I think a lot of that plays with the 48 frames per second once again. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we, we're gonna come off super fanboy, you know, all these problems and everything. The movie has good stuff in it. The last, like, after the first 90 minutes, it really starts to pick up. When you get introduced yeah. to Gollum, it was really, I thought that was a great scene where they were- I think it was the best of the entire movie. Probably, yeah. actually. The, the riddle scene between Gollum and Bilbo was really was really good. And that's the best CGI in the whole movie is Gollum. Yeah, the motion capture, like that was the best great. I've ever seen Gollum. He's, really good. And the creepiest I've actually seen Gollum. You really sweet and juicy. I, what the hell? Do I, who do, what does that sound like? That was close enough. Okay. That was close enough. Yeah, because like in the Two Towers and Return of the King, you kind of felt bad for Gollum. Like he was just like this depressed. Like in this one, he's like, ooh, don't mess with him. He's coming for you. Like in Creepy the caverns bastard. and everything. And that scene was good, and like the whole end with uh, the eagles, and you know when they were falling from the tree, and Thorin had that like epic scene where he just like stands up and he just like runs in slow motion towards. It was really cool, and, and I wish more of the movie was like that. It felt like that was what Peter Jackson wanted to tell. Like that part of the movie was like where that, his real energy was going. That was the meat of the story. Yeah, and I'll be honest with you, right then in that one scene. Once again, the 48 frames per second actually looked good right there. Yeah, because it was in slow motion. And it wasn't like... <laughs> yeah, and it, and it paid off. That's where you can use things like that. But just to have people stand there taking things out of a jar, yeah. it just looked so natural. It, like, every time Bilbo was, like, smoking his pipe, it was like... <laughs> that looked weird. <laughs> what, what did you do? I, yeah. What did you, did you do? Like, You'll see it. Okay. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> But yeah, with the last hour of the movie, the big climax where they're, you know, underground mm -hmm. and all kinds of action, everything's falling in debris. Really exciting. It was cool, but it, it felt like a ride. It felt mm -hmm. like a, a virtual ride with the whole 48 frames per second, the, the overuse of CGI. It just really was a big CGI. It was a lot of CGI. There was a climax. lot. Climax. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, there's a lot of CGI in, in the Lord of the Rings original films. They blended better. It did. And I don't know if that's just the 48 frames or if it's just the fact that so much of this was CGI. Because I just watched the original three in preparation for the reviews I did. And a lot of that was shot on like real locations and they used like CGI blended with actual things. Yeah. Which is the best way to do CGI is when you blend it with something that's actually there. Yeah. It makes it easier to accept. It really just seems like this movie maybe was originally like two hours long. Or, yeah. And after he decided to make it three movies, he's like, oh, we gotta tack on this elf scene. We gotta tack on this mm -hmm. this wizard with uh, the rabbit sled yeah. and tack on all this stuff. And it just seemed like he was trying to mesh together 
a big, almost three hour movie so he could make a trilogy again. Or he was trying to please too many people and being really faithful. But in this movie, they felt like, you know, they had a little bit more balls and they were like, let's just CGI it. It doesn't matter. We have, we have the computer animation techniques today to do it. But sometimes it just looked bad. Like the main orc of the movie who's missing one arm or whatever. You know what? That's true because in the original Lord of the Rings films, like every orc was actually like an actor with makeup. Yeah, and this and is the, you know, CGI. And random orcs in the background yeah. would be CGI. Like every actor with, was an orc with makeup and you thought that he was there because he actually was. Like it's, that's actually very true. Like most of the yeah. orcs in this movie were CGI and completely. They, yeah, these are kind of, I don't know if they got lazy or what they had to do, but. I will say, like for me, being yeah. a big fan of Lord of the Rings, when Elijah Wood came on in the beginning, I did get a big smile on my face. It made me happy. Did you? Um, yeah. I, did. I couldn't. I couldn't focus because it looked like it was shot with a camcorder. <laughs> I know. Just moving around all fast and looked cheap I, I with too much lighting. Mean. Overall, like if you guys saw my review, you know that I will say see the film because you, it's a film you should see. Yeah. You know, it's just very disappointing from the standpoint of the fact that this last, the last one swept the Oscars, won Best Picture, you know, tons of fans of these movies. I would like to be that guy that's like, oh, it's okay, I'll, like, I'll look over this. I can't, I can't do it. It's just, there's too many flaws for me to fully recommend it to you. And that's pretty much how I feel about the film. Yeah, I feel like if they could have just chopped out an hour, 45 minutes, just something to make it go a little bit faster and just take out the fluff that was just completely unnecessary. If you guys can tell me what the bunny scene with the wizard had to do with the plot that moved it along, well, Let, it was in the book. Let me know down below what that played into the story. The last hour of the movie, I really liked. I me really too. That's what really saved it for me. Um, it seemed like that's, like you said, that seemed like that was the story he wanted to tell. Yeah, and the first hour kind of killed it for me. If yeah. you guys haven't checked out John's channel, do so, please. He does a lot of Thank videos, you. and they're good. They're entertaining. They're sad, but funny. I don't know. That's your opinion. Just that's come check best, it out. the best type of funny. Yeah. And anyway, guys, if you haven't checked out my buddy Suckman's channel, check him out. Movie reviews for every single movie that comes out, good or bad, uh, he'll be there to tell you about it. I think we should say one more positive thing about the movie. Like just if what? you want to throw it in there. Um, <laughs> like what? <laughs> um, oh, God. If you guys want to see what 48 frames per second looks like and how it can destroy CGI, even in a movie, uh, created by Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, The Hobbit, Weta, the, one of the best CGI companies out there. This movie destroys their work. 48 frames per second, go to hell, stop. That should be saved for a niche movie like a junky, you know, like some kind of junk ass movie like um, Final Destination 19. That should be 48 frames per second. Just to test it? Yeah, yeah, just that, put it there, let the teenagers watch it. There's blood, there's gore, cool, okay. Not for movies like this. Got it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to see The Hobbit, let us know what you thought about it. Like I said, it's not an awful movie. It's just, it has problems. But let us know how you felt about it. Maybe you loved it. Maybe you absolutely hated it. Let us know below. My name is Bilbo Baggins. Bagginses. What is a Bagginses? Precious.